Good evening, Seekers. God bless you. Welcome to our Tuesday evening Bible study. Hello, Sister Shalina. God bless you. We are running a little bit late this evening. It is 9.15, um, 9.17. Apologies. <clears throat> want to get on this evening um, to just say hello. It is our Tuesday evening study time. I know a lot has been going on. A lot has been transitioning. We're still trying to hope that spring will get here in Boston. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Hello, hello from Denver. God bless you. It's going to be 51 degrees tomorrow in Boston. Shiloh, what's, what is it? What is it in Denver? I'm just saying, Lord, Father, Jesus, please. Let there be sun. Let there be sun. Let there be sun. And sun is going to be anything above 65 degrees. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hello, cousin Bevan. How are you, sweetie? It's 70 in, Col in Denver. Like, that makes no sense, okay? Father God, just help me to get a good attitude about this. I'm glad to be alive. Pastor Sakai, you're not sleeping. Uh, it's, it's morning time. Okay, you're nine. I gotta think, I gotta always think ahead of time. So it's uh it's early morning there for you in Gunta. All right. <laughs> Bevan says it's great. Hello from Denver. I'm so glad to see you all. Listen, I got I got Pastor Sakai in India, I got Bevan in Trinidad. We have Denver, we have Boston in the house. It is a blessing. It's a blessing to have everybody on this evening. Come on in. Y'all can already hear. <clears throat> I'm pressing. It's day number two. I started my official, my official job, y'all. Girls in the workplace again. And it is good to be there. It's good to be there. You know, um, it's not a job when you know it's an assignment. And so it's an assignment that I, I gladly tell the Lord, thank you for the open doors and for the opportunity Allow his glory to be revealed. Boston, what y'all think about this right here? This makes no sense. We had rain, 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 and then cool. The sun did come out, so we did get a little bit of heat. Hello, hello, hello. I, let me get down to the group. I got to greet the saints tonight. Um, <clears throat> we're just going, we ain't, I'm not going to be on long because not just because I'm tired, but I am. <laughs> I was like, y'all. The traffic this morning, it took me two hours to get to work. Two. I got to get my whole bearings back again. Because you know what that means? Jillian has to be up in the morning and leave the house by 5.30. With that being said, so those y'all coming on, I'm going to say throughout, repetitiously, for those y'all who are on the 4 a.m. prayer, listen, 4 a.m. prayer has now moved to 5 a.m. So when you come on in the morning at 4 and we're not there on the Zoom, Understand you're an hour late or you're an hour early. Okay, we're shifting to the five o'clock hour beginning tomorrow morning. So I want y'all to know that. Good evening, good evening, blessings. Awesome. <clears throat> awesome. Good to see you all this evening. Sister cousin, I'm so happy for you. Now, cousin, you are doing that. Um, remember we talked about that the last time you got on here. We talked about doing the family reunion now. Don't forget. I'm putting the ball in your hand. We can make this thing happen. We can do a Zoom family reunion. That's easy. Everybody got Zoom right now. We can just get on and get to know everybody. That's really easy. Good evening to you, Sister Jamie Bird. Glad that y'all are coming on tonight. Hello, hello, hello. All right, let me just go ahead and make the announcement. We are going to India, y'all. We are going to India. It's going to be a... I need prayers and intercession, and we need funds, <laughs> okay? It was not cheap to get. We tried our best to... Uh, get from Israel to India, um, Hyderabad, where Pastor Scott is. The nearest airport is three hours from where he is, and so um, we have to work it out. And so um, we we did. We're booked to go there. We still have to get our hotels. Um, and you know, when we go, we have to go with gifts for the people, for the children. So um, I will ask you all to please consider relieving. Um, we're leaving here on the 15th to go to Israel with Apostle Brian Keith Williams. We'll be there um, for eight days, and then we'll, we won't be flying back to Boston. We're going to be flying um, to India, and we'll be there for about five days, five to six days. It's Our flying time is crazy. We have a 23-hour layover in the country. So it's the best you can do um, since the Asia has been really working behind the scenes trying to make sure that we can find the best flights with the you know that has less layover that's more feasible and so we're just grateful that we're be able I really feel that this is the Lord's will I I know for a fact so I'll be honest I don't have a feeling about it I just know that I have to be there and so whatever the Lord allows to happen 
Um, we're going to pray it through. Okay. We're going to pray it through um, with your prayers, with your intercession. We're bombarding the atmosphere. We know when we go into an atmosphere, into an area, you go to different regions, to different principalities, different powers. And if the Lord has assigned for us to be there, it's something that he wants us to deposit within that atmosphere that's going to come, that's going to counter the reigning spirits that's ruling and manipulating the lives of the people. We're coming to interfere. We're running mad interference, okay? And 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 it will be long-lasting. We're coming to make major damage to the kingdom of darkness there. And so we're also going to dedicate the church that we have helped um, with there in, uh, in Gunta, we're going to meet with the pastors that we do our monthly training with. We're going to meet with the, the children. We're going to meet with the church. Um, and Pastor Sakar is working. He was just so anxious today. <laughs> he just couldn't believe we actually are coming. So, you know, I told him he prayed about it. His heart was really like, please, we would just need to just see you. Um, and and we're going to be there. So that is just a blessing. So we're asking your prayers. We're asking for your support. Um, anything that you can give to help us. Mar Air Market for India. It would be greatly appreciated. Sister Kenyatta David, good evening to you. Blessings to you. Hello, Apostle Sherelle Shelby. Hi, sis. <sighs> Listen, I, I know we got, we're coming to, to Dallas in on August for your launching of your ministry for you and Apostle Shelby. So we're grateful for the work that you all are doing too as well. Um, very source of uh, Dallas. And so I missed you in Sheba, but I felt you in spirit praying for you. You know that you just buried your sister. Um and that's a, a great undertaking, regardless, emotionally, spiritually, just everything, financially, everything. It's just, in, you know, it's no one ever plans on having a sister to transition or any family member. So we missed you, but we understand that you couldn't be there. But we knew that you were praying for us and know that you were in our hearts as I was. I took your place. <laughs> I tried. I couldn't do it as good as you are, but we, we worked it all together, you know. Sade, Nicole, we just was all there working together um, and we missed you. So I want to let you know that. Sister Alberta, good to see you. Good evening. Yellow Sunflower, good evening to you all. Sister Tatanisha Worrell, good evening to you. Kisses to your children as well. To God be the glory. I got an announcement coming up. Hello, Sister Denise. Hello. We're excited, y'all. Grace and peace to you, my beloved Sister Janice Murphy. She was my armor bearer. Um, we did so well. I thank God for all the women who went with us to, to uh, Sheba. Listen, y'all, y'all see a lot. Of it. it was just bananas. And I know where I get that word from bananas because it was, you know, it's just, I was still, you're in an atmosphere that's so super saturated, but you leave and you're like, almost like numb. And this is just for me. Like I can say, oh my God, it was amazing. That I, That's not what I want to say. I don't want to say it was amazing when when part of my soul is leaving me. And that's exactly what happens. As that, that word comes in and it's chiseling and someone's going to come and they're going to sledgehammer and someone's going to come and they're going to remodel and then somebody's going to come and expand you. And then worship is going to just like lay you out. And so, you know, that's just, it wasn't just a great time. No, it's, it's life altering and it's a life altering, my God. It's a life altering that you can feel. So I want to give it, I want to give it, it's for me, the truest experience. The house wasn't packed. It was full, but it wasn't packed. But what was happening in the room, when we say transformative, like literally scripture is being revealed. Like you're seeing what you had not been able to see before you're hearing and you're, Gifts are being activated like Holy Ghost is confirming, like words just spoken in the hallway. It's it's people getting the direct message. You all saw the words of knowledge. It's like this person is trying to hurt you, doing, you know, manipulation and spiritual attacks against you. You, you saw DeMonte, what, how he, Edmonds, how he was given the word of knowledge. Um, to one of the guest speakers, she wasn't in the room. And he keeps seeing a cemetery, seeing the, the names of streets. He never been to where she was. And then it was just so on, like, you know, Jonathan Mason and what he saw about um, uh, Prophet Milne. You know, it's just, how, and for me, I watch how the different gifts manifest through people. And and you, you can ask them, like, how do you do that? Well, they don't know how they do that. Holy Spirit gives them a unique gift and when you're in an atmosphere that's charged, 
there's a, there's a scripture that says um, in, in, uh, um, in the New Testament that there, Jesus went to a certain town and he could do no great works there. Like our Lord and Savior, the creator of the universe who can do whatever he wants to, whenever he wants to, because he is the living word. He could do no works there. It's that the unbelief in that territory, the resentment and the resistance to the word of God was so strong that it would have been a mismanagement of him to pour anything in that region because it would not have been received. And so when you're in an environment like you, like we were in Sheba, like it didn't matter what was happening. People were just ready. They came ready. Yeah, we had our spectators. Yeah, we had our haters. I said it. It, just, it doesn't matter. People come to critique. People come to just, you know, what da, da, da. it doesn't matter. You know, someone is walking. Someone is leaving their stick. Someone had a stroke and it's just like mother is walking without her cane. And one woman came in there. She was young. She had a stroke, her body. And she actually, her husband's with her. And it's like, we, we want to give her back her, her stick. And she was like, I'm not taking that with me. Like she walked away from the pulpit without having her, her stick. I mean, and it, you know, her walking cane, you know, there was, there were things like that. And you, you would think that's not a miracle. You know, I watched this woman begin to bend and I begin to see her saying, Oh my God, like, wait a second. I can go down lower. Like, wait a minute. I can go down lower. Like I, I can really go down. Like, like, you know, it was really evidence of God's presence working in the atmosphere. And it doesn't take a large crowd, but you want people around you who are like mine. And that's why the Lord said, this is a time of divine connection. I know I'm jumping in here. Good evening to you, Lilac. Good evening to you. Blessings, blessings, blessings. <clears throat> so sheep is still happening from our very first sheep, right? Our camels are still coming in. The blessings of the Lord is still making rich and no sorrow. We're just expecting we're expecting God to do whatever it is he can do. Yes. Oh, seekers are going to turn that. Y'all, the seekers, don't close y'all. Yeah, I ain't never seen a bunch of one of travel people. <laughs> travel, travel, travel. I was like, I'm like, seekers be like, oh, Pastor, we going, we going. I'm like, what? We got how many people going? They're ready. They're like locked, loaded, like suitcases, packed in the door, ready to leave. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. We're excited, Pastor Sakai. India is going to be blessed. Blessings to you, my friend. Amen. God, good to see you this evening, Sister Michelle. Good to see you. Lakia, miss you, miss you. We have service this Sunday. This Sunday, one o'clock. I want y'all to come, please, at one. Come, let's have a time of worship. Let's have a time of worship. I do have an announcement to make. I have an announcement. So let me just, I want to read it because um, a mama sent me the text, okay? So, um, let me just get this right. Ooh -wee. All right. So Chanel, that's a long one. So, all right. So Amia, who is Sister Chanel's daughter, um, she got accepted into a summer program, a theater program um, that's in Los Angeles, California. And so they have a goal of, ra of raising $8,000 for her. So they're asking for contribution. Those of you all who know this is Chanel. She is a seeker. Amina, Mia is her daughter. Um, she goes to Boston Arts Academy um, and she's gotten accepted into this program in LA for the summer. It's a great experience. And so um, just to put up, Lilac, put up her, um, please. Good evening to everybody. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. See, this is CD's daughter. God bless you. Okay. Um, got accepted into this program. So I want you to put up your PayPal. For those of you all who would please consider sowing a seed, um, her, their goal is to rate $8,000. It takes money to get your kids to this program. Yes, they get accepted, but they need to travel there. They need to have lodging. They need to have food. And then they got to also pay. Um, so if you have any, would you please consider um, sowing and supporting into Amia, um, her scholarship uh, drive for um, this summer, summer program, theater program in LA. Okay. 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 I'm reading. I'm reading. Okay. So, okay, they're looking to send her in June, but the deadline is May 9th. So anything that you can do, anything that you can do would be greatly appreciated. Um, and Shayun Bayende, okay, the binga, that's my girlfriend. Awesome. I'm just, a, a, that's my girlfriend. We went to RCC together. That's a blessing. All right, so please, um, I'll get to that. I know I'm scrolling down. Ro, Ro, how you doing, darling? Good to see you. I was driving home, said, I know I got to call her, but I got to get wait till I have a time period. I can't give you like 15 minutes. Hello, Sister Yolanda. She was there. She was there at uh, Sheba Atlanta. We had a great time. Sister Barbara Ann, good to see you. Good to see you this evening. Hello, Sister Denise Ware. Glad to see the saints coming on. Sister Sandy, 
Awesome, awesome. Mama, I'm going share. I miss Mother Dennis. I know she mad at me. I ain't called her yet. I got to call Mother Dennis before I leave this country. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My God, Sheba was insane. Sheba was bananas. Bananas, bananas. I'm just scrolling up to see what you are. Mama Spence, we love you. Oh, the mother now, let me tell you about my personal profit. Y'all say what y'all want to say. Now, I got a few. But this here woman, Mother Spence, remember when we were down on Miracle Mile? We were out there serving food to the homeless and people down there. We had a whole press circle, Mother going in on everybody. <laughs> mother, like, you're going to the nations. The Lord said he's giving you the nation. And she was in line. That's like every time the spirit comes upon her. She said that thing with such conviction. I know it's true, mother. It's just confirmation. And and, and mother, mother sowed a seed. She's like, she said, got to, we got to build that orphanage in India. We got to build that orphanage in India. And so we've been supporting the work in India. And we're just grateful. We're for grateful that the Lord allow us. Listen, y'all, we couldn't plan this. We didn't plan this. And I just people say, how does it happen? Just trust God, obey him. Whatever you hear him say, just do it. I don't have, I don't have a one, two, three steps. I'm just like, you know, sometimes I don't, sometimes I feel like I'm not praying enough. I, I, I know I'm not praying enough. You know, sometimes I'm lax on my word. I don't, I don't, I don't joke with that, but I can tell when you lax on the word, I can tell when I begin to like get into this comfortable, comfortable place where it's just not good for me. I got to stay on the swivel. You know, you got to hear. And yes, I'm tired. But that's no excuse for not being inundated with the word of God. That's no excuse for not staying in a place of worship. That's no excuse to veg out for long periods of time and neglect the thing that's going to build your spirit, man. That's how the enemy plays us. So I'm, I'm telling you all, there's no secret. Just do what you know to do. If you follow your seek protocol, at least begin to, to stay in this place of writing one scripture a day. Just meditate on that scripture. You know, fasting from one meal a day, Right. Just praying throughout the day, different increments of time. Set your alarm. I some doing Ramadan. Listen, do Ramadan. Uh, listen to what I'm telling you all. Okay, because people be next to me. They're like, "What is that on your alarm?" Doing Ramadan. Whenever I sometimes set my my phone, so every time there's a uh, is there time to do their duo, their prayers, that my phone you will there will be an um, Arabic uh, call to worship, and I go right into prayer. I pray to my Lord and God. They pray five times religiously. I'm like, we have to set your alarm to go off at different times of day to remind you it's time just to stop and recheck. Even if you got to do it for just two minutes or three minutes, just to, to go to the bathroom, go to the restroom, or just get up, take a walk, and just bring your, yourself to the presence of God where you're just mindful of him. Condition yourself. It's not, it's, 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 I would say it's not magic, right? But train your mind to pray. Train your mind to like, okay, it's God time. Sometimes you're so busy and then you know, it's like, I didn't even eat today. I didn't even talk to God today. This is what you got this for. This thing costs us $1,000. Most of your phone calls $1,000. You can set five alarms to pray or three alarms to pray during the day at different times of the day. I'm trying to help you. This is how you want to stay. Help yourself get better. Help yourself become more spiritual. Good evening, Brother Lacan. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm just trying to tell the truth. It's Nicole. Hi, darling. How are you? Good to see you. So glad that y'all are on. Mally's on tonight. Oh, Lord. I came with y'all. Don't encourage them. Don't encourage them, Bevan. Don't encourage them. The seekers don't need no encouragement to have a backpack. They will want, they will, they will create a revival in Trinidad. Okay. Just to say, Pastor, the seek gotta go to Trinidad. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. That's right. Greet the saints. Come on. Thank you so much for putting that out there. Pastor Kevin Feld is on. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. So good to see you tonight. My brothers from HCMI. <clears throat> Y'all, I had to just share that. Awesome. Awesome. She's going to be gone for two weeks. Rachel the Great is on. Did y'all see my baby, Ashiba? Did you see Rachel Major Sheba? Prayers of the righteous avail it much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a reason why I pray. <laughs> There's a reason why I pray. Lilac is back. I love you. I miss you so much. Come on. We had this. The excuses are there. We got all kinds of excuses, but we ain't going to have none in heaven. We, we do it. We make excuses for everything. No, we don't make excuses. We make accommodations and concessions for everything that we want to do that is pleasurable. And can I tell you a lot of times, like I always say, prayer is work. It's arduous work. And your mind, 
tends to want to go the way of the least resistance. And so she's like, you know, Lord, I thank you, Father. But when you begin to pray in, I tell you, you receive strength as you pray. You don't get strength to pray. You get strength as you pray. So you have to begin. And when you begin, Holy Spirit comes and he takes over. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to see you, man of God. Good to see you. Blessings. He comes in. He comes in and he does what it is the Lord want to do in you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, she is. All right. So I'll, I'll, I'll just open in prayer and I'm just going to share a little bit tonight. I was, um, you know, y'all, I tell y'all it took me two hours to get to work. Two hours. Um, Lilac, make sure you, you keep, okay, I mean, I'll put this up here for a little bit. Um, Amina got accepted to a theater arts program in California. I know one person can write a check. They're hoping to get $8,000. This is what's going to cost her mom to get her. She needs any help that you can uh, help uh, get her daughter out of Boston and into California for this theater um, program. And so anything that you can do to assist or help her will be greatly appreciated. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you all for your kindness. And thank you all for just, listen, good. Thank you for setting your alarms. I know people be saying, okay, what is she? Sometimes she got her head wrapped up. Sometimes she got this going on. Unless she dressed different. I just dress the way I Holy Ghost tell me to put to wear. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It just, you just follow the voice. You And sometimes I know it's different. I'm an apostle, Ryan Keith Williams. I love him to pieces. Um, you know, he said, you're just different. I'm not trying to stand out, but I just, you know, like I know that the Lord told me certain things I have to be. Like, I know if I'm going to stand in a certain pulpit, I have to be belted. I know what that means. He's like, gird yourself. So I had to have my belt purchased and had my bishop, big brother in Atlanta, in, in New York, consecrate my garbs. So he consecrated my belt. And the first one the Lord gave me, I one day was running just, you know, like, oh my gosh, I need a belt to put on. Grabbed the belt to put it on my jeans, just a regular day. And that buckle broke in my hand. And I just, I just, the buckle broke at the tip. You've never seen a buckle broke. A metal buckle on a metal belt just broke in my hand. Because I was taking a holy, uh, something that was consecrated to me to preach in, just to wear outside. So I, I'm, that's just my narrative. I, a lot of times I have to wear blue. Because that's the color that the Lord has given me to wear. A lot of times when I have to operate within a prophetic place, I have to have my belt on. I have to be girded. That's just the way he gives it to you. Whatever He you hear the Lord say, and he may not tell you anything. But I tell you one thing, there's a way. There's a way that you present your body. When you step onto certain any platform to bring the word of God. That your body should not be a distraction to the viewers. And I, this is for the seekers, for those of you all who don't want to, you know, I'm just, you can just, you can just go and go get some water and come back. But for the seekers, there's, a, there's an appropriate attire that you wear that you will never be an offense. Never be an offense to male or female. Period. And there's a way that you can flow and be graceful and be a woman and not one that is a temptress. Bring in the true word of God. But what you have not yet recognized is that your visual appearance affects the mind of those who are hearing the gospel. So you are a distraction when the word of truth is coming out of your mouth. There's a way. There's a way that you can walk on any pulpit and you'll be invited back. Even if you mumble of your words. Now, don't mumble of your words. Some of you mumble. But being prepared. Do you hear what I'm saying? That presentation matters. I heard Apostle BKW said one time, God gave you all of you to, to speak the gospel. So that doesn't mean that you step out here and you come out looking like, you know, Aunt Jemima's twin sister, that you present your body unto the Lord, which is, he's beautiful. He's gracious. God has given you, uniquely made. So you can enhance the beauty that God has given you and still, oh my God, and still do it in a way where you're not a seductress where you're not seducing, where you're not, you're not, you're, you're, where your clothes is not questionable. Oh, people, we shouldn't be looking at that. Then we all should be blinded and we should just be hearing you and not seeing you. But because we're visual creatures and a lot of what we're going to talk about tonight is about seeing. And because what we see affects our perception, what we can receive, it matters what you see. And therefore, if they're going to see you, it matters what you present and how you present it. Okay. 
So I'm not going to even say about, listen, because you can dress with long garbs and still be ratchet. Now, I mean, righteous being ghetto, just be, be trifling. I'm saying there is a way when you know that God, I'm standing in a holy place. I'm standing before a holy people. I'm standing with a holy word. And I don't need me or my body to be what's seen. I need the glory of God to be seen on me. Therefore, I want to dress as if I'm coming before Christ. Because the body of Jesus Christ is Christ. He said to Paul, right? He said to Saul on the way to the ma- on the road to uh, what on the road to Damascus. He says, "Okay, Saul, why are you persecuting me?" It's like who is he persecuting? He was persecuting the church of Jesus Christ. Um, so when we we know that we're presenting the Word of God or doing anything in God's holy place, that there's a way. I'm not just I'm not preaching religion, y'all. I'm not preaching religiosity. I'm talking about this way that you can get before God's people and you can enhance yourself as a woman or even as a man. Because sometimes them skinny jeans are way too skinny. Sometimes your 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 the imprint of your body is a distraction. I hear nothing you're saying. Matter of fact, I'm looking down because I don't want to look because now I'm embarrassed to look at you because my eyes are going to go towards it where it shouldn't go because you're presenting that and that is seduction. And so while we're yet moving here with the word of God and great prophecy, your carnality is trumping your spirituality and you're affecting the the body of Christ and you're affecting your effectiveness of how the word of God is given to you. Come on, this is wisdom and how we move. There's a time and a place for everything. But sometimes we have made too much concessions to do too many things. That's a distraction. uh, That's all I'm going to say about that. I'm I'm not criticizing. Anybody, I'm just saying, for the seekers, there's a way. And if you say you're a part of the seek, I'm going to tell you, you know, no cleavage should be shown. Body con dresses don't belong on the pulpit. Not Especially when not you got ministry before God's people. You wear your, your jeans, then you need to cover so that none of your private areas are seen. Especially when you're standing up on a pulpit, people are look, they're down and they're looking up on you. They see an angle that you don't even know that they're seeing. They're not seeing eye to eye with you. All of that matters. So while we're yet so free in this environment, let's be wise in our engagement. All right, praise the Lord. I'm done with that. I didn't mean to hurt nobody's feelings. I just felt like I need to share that with you. And if you just hear it, um, it, it'll save you. It'll save you. Because there's some places that you can go where you will never, you won't be an offense. Because it's just like, okay. So you, you, you're just not an offense. There's a way. There's a way. There's a way you can track throughout all the decades, all the fashion statements, whatever it is. There's a way you can you can go through all of all of the different time spans and see. There's a gracefulness. There's a gracefulness of how you can present yourself, particularly being carriers of this great gospel of Jesus Christ. All right, I love you all. So prayer is at five. A.M., not 4, okay? We're switching prayer now. We're moving up an hour. It's at 5 a.m., please. If you get on at 4 o'clock, you just didn't listen. Prayer is at what time? 5. Prayer is at 5 o'clock, all right? And so we ask you all also to share and give. Um, Amia has gotten into um, her scholarship program, uh, her theater program in uh, L.A. Please uh, support that. And also, you all know, we're heading to uh, India we're going to actually be in India this month. We're going to be in Gunta. We're flying to Hyderabad, and it's going to be a packed schedule of ministry. Um, so we're just, I can't with you. <laughs> I can't with you. <laughs> to each his own. Every pastor allow what they want to allow on their pulpits. Um, I was just talking to the seekers. No crop tops for our worship team. No props as you want this. It's just this way. I saw a lot of that. I mean, I guess it's a new thing right now that a lot of people, regardless of of regardless of what your midriff look like, like crop tops are in. Like it just I saw it everywhere I went when I was traveling. I was I was I sat in the in the airport and people watched. It was quite amazing to me. I just feel you know, I there was there was a time when we had, you know, a healthy shame. There was some things that just I just didn't want it to see because I had, you know, there was a, you had a decorum about yourself. You had a sense of modesty about yourself. And it's like, you know, I knew when I was dressing fresh 
I knew when I was hiding my clothes and put it in my bag because my mama didn't want me to wear that outside. I knew when that was appropriate, what it was not. So I knew when I was getting ready to play hooky from school, it was the hoochie clothes that I would wear. But I would I would not be caught alive <laughs> wearing those things around my mother, right? So I had, to, I had to go all the way out and around somewhere else to actually get that done, right? I know I was being naughty and I was, I was in my teenage years rebellious, right? So and you go to a place where you understand right now, especially I said, okay, um, if I'm married, my husband doesn't want everybody seeing my body. If I'm, I'm looking to be married, I'm not trying to be on display physically for you to get your attention. What's wrong with me? Why am I selling myself? Why do I, oh, I feel, I feel sexy there. Well, if you feel sexy, you feel sexy for you or you feel sexy for the attention that it will get you. Like, why, why do you wear it? Like, what is, what, what is it evoking out of you? Because this stuff has a certain spirit of attention that it's attached to it. I don't care what nobody says. I'm going to tell you the truth. You know when you have certain things on your body. Lord, why am I over here? We want to talk about clothes. I want to talk about singing tonight. You know when you have certain things. <laughs> Did I say I can't stand you? <laughs> like, like, I can't stand you either. <laughs> yes, yes. Especially my sisters who are heavily endowed. With grace and glory up top, okay? Cancel all halter tops. All halter tops. Unless you are getting ready to go on your honeymoon, okay? Do what you got to do. You got you to gotta get the naughty magazines on the honeymoon. But that's like, but not for, no, not for the church picnic. No, we're not doing that. All right. I'm just saying. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You all know I'm not, I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. Come on now. And listen, just, I just say, how do y'all, how would y'all feel? This is for the seekers. Now I keep saying it's for the seekers, right? How would y'all feel if, if I was wearing a, a crop top to preach the gospel? Yeah. You know, how, how would you feel if I, I'm, you see, you see me and Sheba with a two piece. I'm just saying, just think about it. Insane. And it's no, it's no different. It's no different for you. So you, the the standard you would put for your pastor is the same the same standard you put for yourself. Okay, right? And ask Holy Spirit to help you out now. I'm just saying. <laughs> hey Vern, how you doing, darling? Vern, we're coming to North Carolina in July for my birthday weekend. Okay, so we're gonna be with Apostle Randy Borders. All right, for for solemn assembly. So make sure you lock in that schedule. The weekend of July 23rd, we, we're coming to. North Carolina again to Shelby. All right. So we're getting ready to see you. Don't talk to just put in to get it off right now. I don't want to talk about you working. You're working for the whole weekend. Nah, partner. <laughs> we want to see you. All right. I love you. <laughs> Sister Denise, you got to be said, absolutely no man. We will not be seeing you. Sister Denise, I can't get the two piece. What if it's blinged out? You know, I like sparkles. Okay. No, it wouldn't be acceptable. Okay. All right. There you go. All right. <laughs> Nicole said, you're not even in Trinidad for carnival. Eh? We're not even having that. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Sister Dennis. Oh, did, did I give y'all a visual? Y'all respond. The folks who have been responding, they responded like, oh, no, you're not. Okay. July 23rd, Vern, my birthday weekend. I keep saying that date. July 23rd, that weekend. Put it in for it now. Okay. I know that's right. They are not going to want to hear that. Well, listen. All right. I think I've covered everything. Five o'clock prayer. I'm saying that because I know people are coming on randomly. 5 a.m. prayer. Prayer is not at 4. Prayer is at 5. Okay. We are having service this Sunday at 1 o'clock. So please join us. It's Mother's Day as well. And we have service on Saturday night. So awesome. Good, Vern. I'm glad, I'm glad to see you all. All right. So that's this, sun, this Sunday at 1. We'll be having our monthly gathering. It will fall on um usually we we started for a uh, fourth sunday but we were gone every fourth sunday and again this fourth sunday coming up we'll be in india we'll be just flying back so we won't be able to make it for service um and so we were doing it for a sunday but again we were coming back from shiva so now we're going to be meeting on this sunday and i thank you all who are flexible i know different people have different commitments for different sundays our service is at one o'clock um, so we want you to come. We want you to join us in a time of fellowship. Uh, and we will have a great Mother's Day celebration um, for all of you all. Those of you all who are moms, those of you all to be moms, those of you all who miss your moms. 
Um, and we love each other. We love all the mothers, okay? Um, you're somebody's mother. We appreciate you all. Lord, Father, Pankini. <laughs> <laughs> you're a married woman, you can do what you want to do because Mr. Sunflower, as long as he's the one that's going to see your tankini, that is fine with us, Sister Yellow Sunflower. Don't let me call you by your first name. Okay. Yes, same link for the prayer, okay? Same link for the prayer, 5 a.m. Awesome. Yay, thank you so much. All right, y'all. I'm not going to be before you long because y'all just, um, we already uh, covered some, some situation that we needed to talk about. Present your body as a living sacrifice, and that all it all matters. Your physical body, what you put into your temple, um, your body, how you present it. God has given you your, your your body to glorify Him, and that means to you know you make your package look well. And sometimes we need to understand what that means. Okay, there's a way that that women who are who have been sanctified, who have been called out of the world, um, we're in the world, we're not of the world. So we, we don't take our cues um, from the world. There's a way that Holy Spirit will address us and he will let us know what pleases the Father. So it is us becoming familiar with the voice of God that we can do and present ourselves in a way that will, will glorify God, edify the body. But when you know that you have that communion with God, it, you're, it's sa- your temple is sacred. Your temple is sacred. I thought about this this week and this maybe this is why I was on here. I remember in the Old Testament, and I don't have the particular scripture right now, but as he was giving instructions um, to the Levites, you know, when they when they were wore their linen clothing, right? So the, the sweat couldn't be on their body to wick the sweat off of them. But he's even talked about when they would walk up the stairs, like the back of their calves couldn't be shown. You might say, well, Julian, that's all legalism. That's under the law. I'm like, it's it, it's a lesson to be learned because it's like a lot of the showing of the skin is sensual. So when you see people's skin, it, it, it causes an arousal in your thoughts, in your mind. It really is. Like some people will see a baby's skin and, 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 and it, it, it evokes something. It shouldn't evoke arousal for a child because that's another spirit we need to cast off for you. But it's like a soft baby skin. It brings a feeling of purity up out of you. When you see a woman's skin exposed, it's it, it's sensual. You see a man's skin, right? you know, there's something that miss you down. It sparks something within your psyche that turns you on. That's the reality. So when we're in church, there's some, some, some things, we, you're, all of you are there. You're not just a spirit person in, in church. No, all of your visual, all your physical, your whole, your whole man is there. And so we have to do the best that we can to, not, um, to help our brothers and our sisters be able to worship as best as possible with as least encumbrance. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying, okay? God bless you, Sister Karen. God bless you, woman of God. Thank you for joining us tonight. Grace and peace to you all. All right, let's pray. I want to read Second Kings and then I want to um, get ready for bed so I can go to work in the morning. <laughs> we'll be on five o'clock prayer in the morning. Um, let's let's pray. Father, we just love you and we thank you. We bless you for your wonderful people. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. But Lord, we just thank you for your faithfulness that you have kept us. You continue to nourish us and to feed us. You continue to make ways for us. You continue, God, to connect us, God in so many different areas. I thank you, Lord, that you're bringing God divine connections to your people even right now. I thank you, Father, that there are people that are waiting for these individuals to be in the right place. I thank you that you would open our eyes and let us hear your voice. Open our eyes, let us see you. Open our ears, let us hear your voice speaking to our hearts. And God, that we will be obedient to be in the right place at the right time. So those divine connections can occur. And God, that we will not miss our time. We will not miss our assignment, Father. But God, that the people that you have put in here have sent to be our destiny. Help us, God, our burden bearers, our, my God, our trouble and our load sharers. That when we connect with them, Father, we'll be able to go further. We'll be able to go deeper and higher in you because these these will be divine connections, God, a sent, sent to assign us, God, to fulfill our destiny, to fulfill our purpose, to help advance the kingdom of God. We give you praise, the Lord, tonight for the power of communion, the power of oneness, the power, God, of unity in the body. We come against every divisive spirit that will come to separate them, will come to keep us, God. Oh, my God, I come with the spirit of offense, that will cause us to put up blockages so that we can't hear, that we cannot receive. We can reject that spirit. Uh, and God, we allow the spirit of humility to reign in our hearts. Uh, God, we allow ourselves to stay humble before you, God, that you will continue to, God, speak to us. God, that we will stay teachable 
in the kingdom, God, so that we will continue to grow. Because when we stay open, Father, you continue to pour into us. Uh, and it's that nourishment that the, that will cause us to develop and to become more, to become greater. Father, as long as we're living and breathing, we have the opportunity to continue to build, to be strengthened, God, to be empowered, to do great exploits for you, God. We will not miss our assignment. We will not miss our time. And I thank God for any one of us, that all of us uh, who at some point in our lives, God, have missed moments, have missed opportunities. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the God that redeemed time. And God, for your people, God, you're causing us to, to have an advancement, God, for missed opportunities, God, that that is under the blood. And God, you're restoring, God, the year that the canker worm and the lo locusts have eaten and have stolen from us, Father. You're causing us to rise up in glory and power. You're causing us to take on new strength, God, new mindsets, God. Even, God, you're doing something brand new in our personalities, Father. Those things that has caused us to be separated and caused us to be drawn away and caused us to isolate, God. You're destroying, God, those strongholds. You're, you're breaking them down and you're, God, you're causing us to walk in the liberty and freedom because you have now made us free. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that God causes us to, to rise up in new strength, to, new, to rise up in new power, to take on, God, the strength of the Lord. We bless you, Father, that you're giving us a new joy, joy on the inside of our soul, Father. We, we arise with a smile on our face because we've been in communion with you, God. I speak even right now to those who are resting, my God, that we are preparing to go into our dream state, but you will speak, God, in those dream places. You will deposit and download into their psyche, into their mind, God, into their consciousness. Oh, God, visions of heaven, the glimpse of glory, God. Oh, my Sheila You're going to show them, God, the great strategies and the puzzles are coming together as you get them pieces here and there. And God, as you continue to walk with them and talk to them and God, reinforce their, their courage, God, their courage. They're building up in their most holy faith and God, they're taking on strength to trust you, God, in the small things and from God, from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from faith to faith. We're learning and we're trusting on you more and more and God, you're causing your glory to be seen in us, among us and through us. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're strengthening the body, God. You're preparing us, God, to engage until Loma Sebaha, to engage in God, another level of warfare. But my God, this warfare is not one that will God need physical strength, God, but we will be able to stand still and see the salvation of our God. We give you praise, God, tonight for hearing and answering our prayers. We give you praise, God, tonight for healing and delivering and setting your people free, for healing, delivering, and setting your people free, for healing, delivering, and setting your people free, becoming the spirit of infirmity. The Lord God rejects you. The Lord God rebukes you. We will not tolerate you. We will not stomach you. We will not allow you any space in our mind, in our tongues. We will not decree that it belongs to us, but we will reject you and we will draw nigh to God. And in our drawing nigh to God, the strength that he gives us will allow us to be able to resist you. In the name of Jesus, we will resist the forces of darkness and he cannot stand against the body of Christ because the power of God that's inside of us is greater than any force that will come against us. Oh my God. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for deliverance. Thank you, God, for healing. Thank you, God, for salvation. Thank you, God, for victory tonight. In the name of Jesus, oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Oh, Glory to the Lord God most high. We lift up the mighty and the powerful and the only name of Yeshua HaMashiach. He is the word. He is the living word. He is the bright and morning star. Oh, Oh my God, he's the seed of Jesse. Oh my God, he's the lineage of David. I thank you, God. He's the promised lamb. Oh, I bless you, Lord, for the bright and the morning star. He is the resurrection and the life. He is our help. He's our salvation. He's our comforter. He's the one that lifts us. He's our protector. He's our all in all. He is the wheel in the middle of the wheel. Yes, he's the scroll of righteousness. He's the law of God. He's the fulfillment of destiny. He's the author and the finish of our faith. Oh my God, he is the I am. He is king of kings and he is lord of lords. He is our savior. He's our friend. He's everything. He is the great I am. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for the manifested power of the word of God working in us to do your goodwill and your pleasure. Oh, we say thank you, Holy Spirit, for being God tonight. Be glorified in our midst be glorified in the lives of your people. The very presence of God show up in the room where
where you are right now. In the name of Jesus, the very presence of God show up in the room where you are right now. The presence of God manifest where you are right now with heat. Yes, God, with heat. Glory to God. Thank you for the power, the power to transform, the power to heal, the power to shift, the power to alter the destiny of men because you are God. We give you praise, God, tonight for hearing our prayer. Oh, send them higher. Thank God for Tyler. In the name of Jesus, you touch Tyler right where he is. Ole Masha and the lift him on Masha and put him into the high places. Yes, God. Oh my God, comfort him and surround him and seal him in glory. My God, so the enemy will never be able to touch him again. Tyler belongs to Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Kyrie belongs to Jesus. In the name of Jesus, oh God, our sons belong to you. Salvation they came out. So teleke porata manda la bahanda to the son of the Kushites, leke rooma matalabandio koshendeme. We command them to come forth. We command their hands to be lifted for the encounter that they have with God will transform their lives and the generation that's yet to come. Oh God, we give you praise tonight. Hallelujah and glory to the Lamb. Oh my God, Hallelujah. Jonah belong to you. Elemeshe and talabandio shanda. Oh, our sons belong to you. You, um, our daughters belong to you, but oh God, for the seed, the male seed tonight, uh, we intervene under the shanda, we intercess, leke barabanda, we stand in the gap, lebo manda, in the name of Jesus, uh, for the seed, leke morabashanda, the carriers of the seed, uh, that you, God, will God purge them, uh, that you will purify them, uh, that we, God, decree and we proclaim over their life uh, salvation and glory of destiny, God, um, that is locked in you. Uh, Oh, we thank you, God, tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God. I say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. My God, tonight, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we pray for the Obamas in Amashana. The name come to me, Lord. You know what's going on. Oh, oh, my God, on the inside. But I thank you, Father, that you, God, will not allow the dead angel to come and God to snuff out before you're done. Oh, for the Supreme Court, even right now, that schemes are going to be unveiled in the name of Jesus. Oh, Amashana, but that God will be glorified. My God, you're doing a work, Father. There's a shaking up that's happening. Uh, but God, everything will be made clear. Oh my God, you will not allow your children to walk in darkness. Uh, we thank God that you, God, are the author of life. Um, and God, from a pure motive, from a pure motive, oh my God, what we do must honor you and honor truly you. My God, in the name of Jesus, uh, not political powers, in the name of Jesus, uh, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess uh, to the glory of God, our Savior. In the name of Jesus, uh, my God, there, oh my God, whistleblowers, my God, will blow the whistles, uh, for there are many uncovering, uh, there are many uncovering, my God. God, in the name of Jesus, for systems will crumble. For systems will crumble. For the kingdom of this world will become the kingdom of our God and his Christ and his righteousness in the name of Jesus. For you're weighing the hearts and the intent of men. Oh my God. Men's hearts and their ways and their works are being weighed even right now. And it will be called, it will be seen. You will cause it, God, to be visibly seen in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for your prophets. God, we come against every God lying spirit and we rebuke it and we silence the mouth of the lying prophets in the name of Jesus. But let the truth of God's word stand for sure, regardless if they want to hear it or not. The word of God must go forward unencumbered, unhindered with force and power for those who have an ear to hear that will hear what the spirit is saying to the church. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, God, tonight. And we say thank you. Holy God, my God, holy God, holy God tonight. Holy God, holy God tonight. Holy God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. All right, y'all. I just want to read. I want to read tonight a little bit. And I'm not going to be before you long because I, we've really, we've done a lot. We've done a lot already. We've been on for an hour. 
Praise the Lord. God bless each one of you. God bless you, Elder. Uh, sister Shawanda uh, Pierman, God bless you, my sister. My Sheba sister, God bless you all. Thank you all for coming on, Sister Latana. God bless you. God bless you. Good to see you tonight. Good to see you all tonight. The Lord is present. Amen. And let's get ready to pray. Amen. Sister Val, you know, I feel my boy. I see the Lord lifting him up and lock him in, into a room. Listen, it's almost like a Rapunzel, but a whole, but in a good way. And ain't nobody climbing up to get him. He's sealed. Tyler's sealed. Amama Desha. In the name of Jesus, my God. Thank you, Lord. I know. Don't even ask me what happened. That whole situation just happened. I just looked at it. Okay. Computer going to do what computer going to do. But I mean, we thank God for you. Mother Riska, I love you. I thank God for you. New Orleans in the house. We praise God for you. Amen. Praying for you and all your grandbabies. Sister Terry, good to see you, Sister Shelba. All right. Now, I, I want to just go to, to Second Kings right quick. Can I jump? To, and Let me just give you all, as I was coming home and I was just talking to the Lord, I said, Father, it's Tuesday. You know, I didn't even preach the message that I really wanted to preach um, in Sheba because, um, because the Lord did what he wanted to do and he said what he needed to say. Um I'll say this. Let me just say a couple points that, that, that comes to me right now is that you all need to be okay with being in the limelight. Like some of us really choose to be on the backside because it's, we're comfortable. You can just mind your business and do what you got to do without people looking because sometimes that pressure, the pressure to perform, you have to resist it because it's just sometimes some platform, whether it's Sheba or any other platform, especially when you know that you have like, you know, I, I usually hate those seven last words. I don't hate the seven last word. I hate the platform because I feel like it, it strokes a competition and, and it goes from like, you know, you almost want to outdo the, the person who came ahead of you. Right. And, and I don't, I don't like that. I, I just want you to just give what it is, how the Lord gives it to you and be all right. If it's five minutes, do it and sit down. You know, if they tell you 10 minutes, please come in, in nine minutes and 30 seconds. Don't come in in 15 minutes and then make everybody have to wait because now you're out of order, even if your word is good. Right. So it's just, a, it's those things that I just don't like that. But I thank God because the Lord, uh, honor Lord for apostle, because he is a father. And when the father shows up in the room, he automatically demands out of you what's in there. But when the Lord was telling me about just prophetic influences and producers, one is that producing is a mandate. Producing is a mandate. That's just found. That's that's the basic law of creation, right? So when God in Genesis 1, 26, when God said he created man and he gave, I always go back to that because for me, and this is what uh, Pastor Donnell said, it's like, uh, or it's probably one of them, one of them said it. Listen, the whole, everything is in Genesis. Everything really is in Genesis, the first three chapters. It's a summation of everything that happened. And the purpose was, is that I, that he created us to produce. And so male and female, there's an egg and there's a, there's a seed, right? And without the coming together of them, you're both, you're, you're both operating. You're both has been given the mandate, but until there's a coming together, that's why he talked about coupling. Until there's a coming together, there's no true production. That's why anything that is counter egg and seed is an anomaly. And it goes contrary to God's original design and God's law for production in the earth realm. So everything was meant. He said, let there be. And he never says stop. So that's why you have stars that's being that's dying and being recreated. You have galaxies that will continue to forever form because God never said stop. He said, let there be. And so no matter what year, what dispensation, what millennia that you're living in, there will always be procreation. There will be always be a product being produced. And God also called you to have influence. My God, let there be light. What is light? Before there was ever an illuminary, before there was ever a sun, a star, a moon, there was illumination. What is that illumination? And if there was no sun to light, to light up the day, if there was no, no moon or no stars to light up the night, what was the let there be light? Well, we understand that everything was in chaos and darkness. Don't just see that a big black void. See 
ignorance. See, the spirit of darkness, anything that you don't know is a darkness in your eyes. If our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Why? Because the God of this world had blinded them. If you're blind, you don't have the capacity to see. There's an absence of light. There's an, elapse, an absence of illumination. There's an absence, there's a void of truth. There's a vortex, there's a black hole there where there is information that's lacking. So God says, let there be. And in that being, everything that was is and will be continues and is because God is the omnipresent that's in every dimension he is he was yet he is he is and he is he will and he is and when it's all done he still is so that's the kind of God that we serve and this is the truth that the, the dimensionality of the truth that he says let there be so now he says you are light you are light light in darkness so how are you light in darkness? Because I mean, the truth that you have, the revelation that you have, the experience, the encounter that you have with God, it's, it's not just only changes you, it is also um, a catalyst for change. We always talk about it, but it's just the truth. It's that no matter where you go, when people encounter you, they're having an encounter with God. When people encounter a believer, a child of God, Jesus says, when you see me, you see the father. Why? Because me and my father are one. Here I am an expression. Here I am God, the son, but God, the father, listen, me and him are one. So all you see an, an expression of the father through the son, when they see you, they also see the father because Jesus is the firstborn of many brethren. Who are those many? That's you and I. So now as he is, so are we in the earth realm. So when they see you, they see God. When you understand that, you, you, you just, you, you just come into the know. You have revelation. You understand that. Okay. If, if I am, he says, father, John 15, glorify me with the glory that you had in the beginning. We were not separated now. You and I, listen, Elohim made man. Elohim said, let there be. So the, 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 the Godhead was in operation. They were in concert. They were operating together when they created man in the image of God, in the likeness of God, male and female made he them. So I am God in the earth realm. I'm not the capital G. I'm the little G. Right? Man, everyone, this is what's so important for us to understand. When you can look at each other and see the divinity of God, you will not be open your mouth to speak against anybody. I don't care what their lifestyle may be right now. That if you have the eyes of God, you're going to be able to look beyond their faults and see their need. Just like he did for you, just like he did for me. That you will understand for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. He was the only begotten then, but now he's the first of many begotten. Because when he came and fulfilled the mandate of the father to die, to bring us back into right relationship, that's the gospel, to bring us back into right relation with him. And for as many as believe and received him, then he gave power to become sons. So now you also have ears, your ears of God, a son, joint ears with Jesus Christ, also a son. And so now this is the truth of who you really are. You are light in darkness. Why? Because Christ was light in darkness. You are the salt of the earth, that you have the truth that preserves men from dying you are salt you keep things from rotting you keep things from decaying and so you need to see yourself greater than your current situation you need to see yourself beyond your physical structure you see yourself beyond your physical environment you have to understand that greater is he that's in you if the creator god is living inside of you i think you need to get to know that side of yourself that part of you yes 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 life is spiritual that part of you so that was part of my message to let you know that you were born for for to produce and you were born to influence he says why i will make you fishes of men right i'm gonna come and i'm gonna snatch you i'm gonna fish you and i'm gonna teach you what i what i know so I can make you who I am. Now go and you bring this good gospel and you also make them fishes of men. Replicate, duplicate. Here you go. See that produce? That's, that's production. Produce it. Replicate. Go. 
Go into all the world. Preach the gospel, right? Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, right? Whatsoever I I've, I've do, I mean, you do what I have told you to do. Whatever you see me do, you do it. And, and then there will be that you, you will have a number where no man could number because you will see the multiplication of God reproducing himself to the power of that word, that seed word that's going to be spoken into the heart of men and it will begin to transform them and then it will be replication again and again. So what are you doing? You're producing and you're influencing. You're producing and you're influencing. Yes, my God, I understand that influencers now with these days when we have them, they're on Facebook and they're on TikTok and they're on Snapchat, and they are the ones who are able to on YouTube, you know, they are your social media moguls and, and whatever they wear, everybody want to wear and people will send their brands to them because they are influencers. They have the ability to, to, to shift the mindset of people to cause them to think a certain kind of way. But God has called you to be that. You are going to either challenge the culture or you're going to adapt to it. But God wants you to be a challenge of the culture. He's put you to be light in darkness, salt to the earth, light in darkness darkness, soul to the earth, that you have to have an influence so that wherever you go, my sister Stephanie Hudson said like this way, that I got to smell Christ on you. My mama would say, somebody said, what's that smell? She said, Jesus. I smell like Jesus. They got, you got to pass the whiff test that you smell like him, that you, you're wrapped in holiness, that you're wrapped in the glory, that you're wrapped in love, right? All of that is an influence. People are seeing there's a joy about you. That stuff is contagious, that you're kind, that you're not one that lose your cool. I'm talking about influencers. It's not just those who have the money to, to, to buy people off. It's not just a, an Elon Musk. And you know he's an influencer because he got everybody to sell, to sell their Twitter shares. Okay. Okay, so, so yeah, here you go. You have the physical influence where money, the God of this world, what's his name? Mammon, it's not the devil, it's mammon. It's the God of money. It's the God of money, that, that tangible assets that, that can acquire more. It is that commodity that can buy men. It's that thing that says, the more I have it, the more important I am because I truly don't understand my truest self. My spirit man is diminutive. My spirit, my understanding of my true self is so small and so skewed that I still don't understand who I really am in God. When I really understand that I'm a seek of God and all these things are going to be added onto me. I don't chase things, chase things find me because I am a resource. I am a resource because I am tapped in to the source, my God, when you understand you can never deplete me because you're not my source. He is my source. So I will give and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. Will I cause men to give into your bosom? When you understand the word of God and apply to your life for real, real, y'all, there is nothing that you will not be able to do for the kingdom advancement. Understand, it's not for yourself. It's not that you will get the glory. I'm here to influence this world for Christ. I'm here to influence this world for Christ. All right. So I would say that as Mordecai was sitting at the gate. Now I wanted to, uh, you know, Bishop's like, you got two more minutes. I'm like, ah, um, you know, but for, for gatekeepers, you have to understand when we talked about people who sat at the gate, a lot of businesses were done the gates. Now you can go to um, Esther, just read the whole book because it's just a really, really good story. <laughs> but throughout scripture, you will find that even right to so the gates, the, the walls of Jericho, right? You have, um, there's a lot of things that happen on those walls. Rahab, Rahab, who was the harlot of the, of the city, right? Rahab had her, her, her chambers on top of the wall. So these walls wasn't just like a gate. They were like thick walls. You could actually build an apartment on this, right? And so a lot of things happen within the gates, within the gates. So usually you had two gates to a city. You had the outer gate, and then you had a, a, a great distance, and then you had the, the inner gates. And so within the distance from the first gate and the second gate, it was the courtyard. So a lot of business, a lot of merchants would come in, and they would be selling their goods. A lot of the, um, the, the elders would gather at the gate, and so they would be discussing business. Abraham negotiated for Sarah's um for Sarah's tomb at the gate when um Boaz was coming to deal with Ruth he brought 10 of the um the elders and they all met at the gate to discuss so there was a lot of legal things going on there's a the king would come and he would sit at the gate and to, to watch the people when David had lost his son and he was not at the gate the people who gave their lives the people who fought for him their heart was so this um there was so uh disconcerted in their heart because here Absalom had 
had this ruined David's name, had slept with all his concubines, has chased his father to really kind of kill him and shame him. And yet David loved Absalom so much. So the men who actually gave their lives to destroy Absalom, when they find left their family, left their household, put, put their lives on hold to go and fight for David. And when David found that Absalom was dead, he refused to go and sit at the gate. So the people who were fighting for him, they went home sad. They had won the battle. They had won the battle with everything that they had in it. But because the king was not at the gate, it sent a message to their psyche that says it was not well with the king. And if it's not well with the king, here goes that influence again. If it's not well with the king at the gate, that all the people were so this um, burden in their heart. And then there was, I think it was Jonah, jo uh, Joash or Jonah, it's one of them J words, okay, I don't have the name right now, went to the king and he's like, yo, like, what's good with you, David? Like, these people have been fighting for you. They've been here, like, warring for you. And you mean to tell me you're so sad that Absalom is dead after he near killed you, drove you away from the from the kingdom? I mean, these people had given their life to bring you back here. You actually get it. And then you want to sit here and you'll be so in your feelings that you don't want to go sit at the gate? And so David got himself together, shook himself off, and he goes out the gate. And when the people saw David sitting at the gate, the influence he had at the gate, their hearts were lifted. God has put you to be at the gate. So you can't be hiding. You can't have a crown. That's why I'm going to go here. You can't have a crown to sit in the kitchen. No, you got to, when you have been given a crown to be in the boardroom, you being in the bathroom is not going to work. That God has put you into certain places to have influence and authority and power to be that influencer. You've got to, number one, produce in a place that God has given you provision. So you have to be out. You can't be hidden. There's the time when God will call you away to himself. But if you're going to effectuate a change, you can't effectuate a change from the outside. You can't, you just going to be somebody with, with an opinion, but somebody who's going to be a catalyst of change has got to be close. So now we're talking about mantles and impartation. So when you get to talk about mantles, I can't, listen, this is where my scriptures want to go. Second Kings, Second Kings chapter two, verse 10. Second Kings chapter two, verse 10. Let me slow down, but I got to go because we've been running late already. Let me tell you about this. Second Kings chapter two, verse 10. Elijah is getting ready to be caught up, right? And so if you read all the way, and I, I had circled all the way from uh, verse three, the group of prophets of Bethel was telling Elijah, Elisha, listen, don't you understand that your prophet is going to be taken from you today? So that they already see, he said, I already know that. Just keep it quiet. Don't say nothing to me, right? And here he goes again, verse four. Then Elijah says to Elisha, he says, stop. I got to go to Jericho. Stay here. He's like, uh, 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 that ain't how it's going to go. He says, surely the more living. Wherever you go, I'm going with you today. So there's a time where it, it's rightful to, re, to reject. Uh, the, let me, how I want to say this correctly, because I don't want y'all going to think that y'all going to tell y'all pastor no, okay? There's a time when resistance is necessary. There's a time when God is trying you to see if you have what it takes to endure the, the test for elevation. So Elijah is telling Elisha, don't follow me. He's like, I'm not having it. The prophets of Jericho is saying, man of God, you know your man, you know your prophets get ready to take from you. So this is not something that's in secret. And verse uh, five says the group of the prophets also now um, of Jericho. So we have the prophets of Bethel, the prophet of Jericho. We have Elijah himself telling Elijah, don't follow me. He said, don't you know that the Lord is going to take away your master? So this is a prophetic word that has been known and heard, but yet and still Elijah is not paying attention to everything that everybody else already knows. Uh, he is so focused, uh, he's so focused on the man of God. He's staying close to the one that's carrying the mantle because he wants something from that man. Remember, Elijah, Elisha didn't select Elijah. No, Elisha was out there minding his own business with his with his uh 12 oxen in, and, and doing his rowing. And then the Lord God says, Go and throw your mantle on Elisha. Throw it on him. And so when he saw what had happened, he said, can I go say goodbye to my family? Whatever, go sacrifice. God had already called him. So he heard the call. Now he's following the mandate for his life. All oh, there's a lot of prophetic words coming from the prophets, the true prophets. He's not moved by that. He's not even moved from the instruction that Elijah is giving him. Don't follow me. He's like, no, 
I'm going to follow you because what I want, I'm going to get. There is a resistance that something you have to have. There has to be a resolution in your spirit that I don't care if you don't want me to be around. I know what God shows me. And until God moves me, it doesn't matter who says what. An angel can come down and give me another instruction. I'm not moving away from what I know God has already told me that I need to get and I need to get it from you. So now verse, I'm in 2 Kings chapter 2. Then Elijah said to him, all right, stay here. I'm getting ready. Uh, um, uh, hold here. The Lord has told me to go over to the Jordan. And he said that surely the Lord lives um, uh, and you are alive. I will not leave you. So they went over together and it happened there. So now the 50 men from a group of prophets. I like this. I want to read this. I'll listen to this because this is so good to me. Listen to this, right? Second Kings chapter seven, two chapter seven, second Kings chapter two, verse seven. Sorry. 50 men from the group of prophets also went and watched from a distance. So it wasn't just Elijah and Elisha. We had 50 other prophets who are witnessing what's trans getting ready to transpire. But listen to the scripture. Listen to the scripture about mantles that you need to understand. Listen to it very carefully. Listen to it. It said 50 men from the group of prophets. So they had heard the word and they knew what was getting ready to happen. They were also the ones that was telling Elisha that Elijah was getting ready to be taken away from him. Okay. So, but 50 of those men from the groups of prophets also went and watched here from a distance. They watch from a distance. Proximity is the key to impartation. Go ahead and put that in the chat. Proximity is the key to impartation. You want the impartation, you better follow close. And I know that may not be popular for people. Or you can listen. You can listen to them preach, but I'm trying to tell you there's something about being in the presence and proximity that makes that makes impartation necessary, viable and inevitable. You ain't getting no baby looking at looking at at, at your boo on TV. You ain't, get, you ain't getting pregnant FaceTiming. You ain't getting pregnant on Zoom. There has to be proximity in the presence and there has to be a release and a reception of seed. Does that make sense to you without being too much about it? Because we're grown in here. It's absolutely necessary for impartation. Don't tell me you just, you love your pastor or you want somebody that you want that gift. Listen. Follow closely. If you want it bad enough, if you know that God said, this is my man of God, this is my woman of God, I have given this person uh, something for you to release into your spirit. You've got to follow close in regards to what anybody else think about them or you. And when they want to sometimes be extra because they feel uncomfortable because sometimes, can I talk about the woman? Let me talk about the women, the women preachers. I can talk about myself. Sometimes when we come into the presence of the fathers, they don't know how to handle us daughters. No shame to no fathers. Because sometimes it's very uncomfortable when you have, we are straight up women and you have men and you have the physical, there's a woman and a man. You all don't go, get, I mean, you know, pastors have to stay away from a lot of stuff. Women and men, because one, a lot of people are going to think a lot of things. And when people don't know your heart, they automatically think, oh, what she want with him? Oh, she just want him. She want to be here. Or, or, or the wife may get jealous. Or the people say, I've had people tell my, my pastor straight up, don't have nothing to do with me. Or oh, watch out for that one. I'm like, are you crazy? No, I'm the one that my first lady will be able to trust with my, with my pastor. Now, I'm, I am that one. Because I'll, I'll call you to the I'll call you to the carpet. Do you, do you hear me saying? Because everybody have not been given the authority, the power, and the grace to keep the shepherd's secrets. And I mean keep it to secrets where, where he doing foolishness. No, no. Some of us have been called to, to, to walk and to cover the fathers backwards because we don't want to see their nakedness. Some of us are not called to, to lay with the fathers. We're called to protect them and to sometimes check them in private and still honor them in public. Everybody don't have that grace. Everybody don't have the grace. And a lot of people don't know how to deal, oh my God, with women. I'm just talking about women right now. With women who understand that that father has a release in his mouth for me. Or that father has a release of, he has to release me into, into ministry. There's a grace on his life that he must be. That father is carrying a mantle that I have got to carry. 
and so if we can get away from the gender and see that I'm a spirit being in a body, that it will, that, then we could be just fine. But everybody don't have the maturity to be able to handle things on that level. All right, so let me go and just continue, move on. So 50 men from the group, verse 7. 50 men from the group of prophets also went and watched from a distance. They were from a distance at Elijah and Elijah. Elijah and Elisha stopped beside the Jordan River. Verse 8, look at it. Then Elijah folded his cloak together and struck the water. So this is where we get the ideology of mantles, okay? That the prophets used would wear a specific coat around them. That was almost, it was a wrap, it was a throw, they covered their face. It was, uh, it was, it was the, the prophet's mantle. So he took this cloak and he folded it in half and he struck the Jordan River. So listen here, he struck the Jordan River, verse 9. Um, and verse eight, then the divide the river divided, and the two of them went across on dry ground. Understand now. This that I we read that. And I just want you to pause for a second to think about it. If you go to any lake in your community, any river in your community that you just can't walk across, and if you strike it, okay. If you strike it and and <laughs> and you're walking across on the ground, either e either you're walking down into like a valley because you know, just think about it. If you go in the middle of the river, it's depth down there, right? So when you're talking about <clears throat> the the waters parting and they walk across on dry ground, part of us also think that they're walking straight across. But if they're walking straight across, do you understand that that water have to pass, have to part, and that ground has to rise up so they can walk on it? Do you understand that? Now, especially if the ground is dry, do you understand that the miraculous power of God, what's happening here, that he parts the water, he raises the ground, and they walk across on it, and then closes it back down. Or he passed the water and they walk down in the valley of the water and they walk back up to the other side. You have to see that with your mind's eye. Don't just that's just that's just one scripture and they walk across the dry ground. Well, pause, part. Wait a second. There's a lot that's happening with this whole water. But remember, there's fifty other prophets watching. Where are they? From a distance, so they can see, but they're not close enough to receive the impartation. I refuse. I refuse to be in the presence of any great man and woman of God and not get an impartation. I absolutely refuse. And now you may not be close enough to like touch them or to be with them all the time, but let me tell you what's going to be a key to release that impartation is honor. What you honor, you will attract. Go ahead and put that down. You can write that. What you honor, you will attract. Because when you release honor, honor to a thing it it it, it releases it, it comes back to you so you'll find that when you when you have when you hold somebody in high esteem what you release out of your heart is really love and respect and that's a seed and when you plant that love and respect trust me it's called favor favor comes back to you i'm i, I i'm telling you y'all can write that down and put the day's date on it acts got to give you a heart of honor so you can stop being a hater be one that honors and not one that hates. Because when you have jealousy in your heart, that's just so seeds of discontent and rejectment and rejection. And you don't want that. You want, if somebody has a grace, a gift that that's really amazing, you need to be one that celebrates that individual even from a distance. Because when you, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. If you're one of honor, then honor comes back to you. And if you're one of that gives honor, then favor is what you find. Favor is the fruit of honor. Glory to God. Let me finish here, y'all, and get y'all to bed. Verse 8 says, Then Elijah folded his cloak together and struck the water with it. The river divided, and the two of them went across on dry ground. When they came to the other side, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I can do for you before I am taken away. There's no doubt that the word of the Lord has been spoken. There's no doubt that God has already decreed that Elijah, Elijah is going to be taken away. And because of his resistance to the naysayers, because of his resistance even to the mouth of the true prophets. <laughs> if God tell you something, 
If God says something to you and you believe that in your heart, can I just tell y'all, can you just, just wait on it until you know for sure that God is telling you move away from it? Because sometimes a lie, a, a lie will come through the mouth of a true prophet to test you. Ask the old, that's the young prophet who lost his life because he listened to the old prophet. Sometimes the, the Lord will send a lying spirit in the mouth of a prophet to speak, to challenge somebody's heart. If you are truly God's child, if you know God is speaking to you, if you have an inkling, you think that God is speaking to you, don't move off of it. Until you say, Father, I don't know. This is where I'm hearing you. I mean, I mean, come to him correct because you don't want to miss God. You don't want to miss God. And so Elisha resisted the, the, the prophetic words, the cautionary words that was given to him by the prophets, by the council of prophets and by his, his, his master himself, Elijah. He, re he resisted him. I'm not leaving you. He had a resolution in his heart. He had a conviction that I'm not moving off of this because what I want for you is greater. And if I am separated from you, I'm going to miss something. I'm going to miss something. So when he finally crossed over, he crossed over, he went through. That's a burial, they all. That's a death. That's a death. He went through the Jordan. He crossed over and he came up on the other side. Now he says, now what do you want? Ask me. What? The, the ax came. The, he, the request was came. What do you want? The ax came and he said, okay, what I really want for you, I want a double portion of what you have. And here's what, here's where our scripture comes. Here, here's what he says. I, I just want, I, I'm going to leave you right here with this verse. He said, you've asked a difficult thing. Elijah replied, but if you see me, if you see me when I am taken from you, then if you see me when I'm taken from you, then you will get your request. If your eyes are open and you can see me, now you've been following me close enough to watch me here. But I need you to see me when I'm elevated. I need you to see when I shift. Sometimes you can be so close to somebody that you become so familiar with them that when God shifts them, you actually miss what's happening. I'm going to help you here. I'm going to help you here. Don't get too familiar with the people that God has put in your life to help grow you. I know you friends. I know you and your pastor hang out. I know, I, I know you all go bowling. I know y'all take trips together. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all go shopping together. You, you, you know, y'all eat at each other's family's house. Y'all back and forth. You know what I'm saying? He he able to tell you everything that's on his heart. You know, he, go, he even slipping every now and then and say what he should be saying. And then you start feeling like, you know, that's my boy. Don't become so familiar with those that God has chosen to carry a mantle of leadership because that's how the enemy tricks us. I don't care what my pastor do. He's a man of God. I'm not his judge. You hear what he's saying? I don't care what my first lady do. Now, I, don't, I say I don't care. I care that they live a right life of holiness. But I also know that they're, before they're the man of God or the woman of God, they're a man and a woman. So I don't deify them. But I also know that God is a God that will choose imperfect vessels to put a perfect word in to bless the life and transform a life forever. That's what God, our God does. He takes imperfect vessel, ooh, like Jillian, and will put a perfect word and allow that perfect word to be heard by somebody who's struggling, somebody who's in pain. And although I may be struggling with the same thing, he will free them, heal them, and deliver them because his word is perfection. Although we're yet striving for perfection, that's the kind of God we serve. And when we keep that ever before us, then we, we, we won't be so um, thrown out of the loop when, when a man or woman falls from grace. Because we understand that the Lord forgive us for not praying and covering like we should. Because maybe we're not praying for them. Maybe we're not covering them. Right? But what I understand is that even if they're faithless, God is still faithful. And God requires me to live a life that pleases him regardless of what they may be doing. That's all I'm trying to say to you. He says this, she says, and Elijah says, please, um, you have asked a difficult thing. Elijah replied, if you see me when I am taken from you, then you will get your request. But if not, then you won't. If not, then you won't. What you, what you can see and what you can perceive is what you will have. Can I just say that? I want to end there. What you can see. 
what you can perceive is what becomes reality, is what becomes your truth. Elijah, Elisha was able to see Elisha lifted. How do I know the word of God says it? Listen, let me read to you and we'll end here. God bless you, Prophet Stephanie. I'm glad you're on tonight. Sister Sandy, good to see you. As they were walking along and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire appeared, drawn by horses of fire. It drove between the two men. So this is a real life fire chariot. It drove between the two men, separating them. And Elijah was carried by a whirlwind into heaven. Verse 12 says, Elisha saw it and cried out. He saw and cried out, my father, my father, I see the chariots and charioteers of Israel. And as they disappeared from sight, Elisha tore his clothes in distress because at that moment, his father was taken from him. You feel that, my His father was taken from him. Elisha picked up Elijah's cloak, which had fallen when he was taken up. He said, if you see me when I'm taking up, then you can have what you ask. But if you don't see me, you're not going to get it. He actually saw the glory opened up. He saw the glorious chariot come down. He saw heaven and earth collide. He saw this, uh, I will call it a chasm between eternity and time open up where you have spiritual beings manifest within the earth realm. That's an anomaly. He physically saw that. How do I know he physically saw it? Let me continue to read to you. Listen here. Verse 13, Elijah picked up Elijah's cloak, which had fallen when he was taken up. Then Elisha returned to the bank of the Jordan River. Elisha now, he struck the waters with Elijah's cloak and cried out, where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Then the rivers divided and Elisha went across. He asked the question. He didn't say in the name of Jesus. He was just saying, the man of God said, if I saw him when he went up, he said, the impartation came through the mouth of the prophet. He said something. He spoke something. And he said, if you see me when I go up, then you will have your requests. If you don't see me, my God, seeing they see not, hearing they hear not. The word is spoken, but they can't receive it. And if you can't receive the word, then you have no perception. And perception is going to affect your vision. So you can't see because you can't hear. And this is what the enemy will do. He will have you in a Sheba conference and he will have you running around, but you still have not taken in the word because hearing you still don't hear. And seeing you still don't believe. I don't really believe that she really got healed. So then when you should have been the one receiving a miracle because you honored what the Lord was doing in the present through the man of God, when you could have received that seed of healing yourself or that impartation of miracles in your hand, because there was doubt in your heart, you lost, you forfeited because seeing you did not see, you missed the moment. When the glory came in, my God have mercy. You missed the moment when the glory came in. So Elijah now sees what happened. Elisha sees what happened and he receives it. He asks the question, where's the God of my father? Because he said something. Now let me see if you're going to back up his word. And God did that. God honors his word. <laughs> Listen here. And so the rivers divided and Elisha went across. Verse 15. I love this one. Listen here. I'm almost done. When the group of prophets from Jericho saw from a distance. Oh, uh, but I say proximity is key to impartation because they saw what happened, but they were not close enough to grab it. When the group of prophets from Jericho saw from a distance what happened, they were there, they witnessed it. They exclaim, what can they say? They can now open them out and decree a thing, but how, what, what would have happened if they all went across with Elijah? What do you think would have happened? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. That, that, that cloak could have been 
rip the shreds. I think I think there would have been a whole lot of multiplication, production, and influences now with that gift. But you see the life of a lie, shut following closely to receive the impartation. You have to see to perceive. What you perceive, you can receive. You have to be close enough for you to receive the impartation of the seed so that you can produce. It says Elijah's spirit. That's what they said. Elijah's spirit rests upon Elisha. And they went to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Sir, they said, just, sir, they said, just say the word and 50 of our strongest men will search the wilderness for your master. So seeing, they still didn't see. They didn't understand what happened. They, 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 the chariot and all that. You're going to go search for the master. Did you not just say to me before he was taken up that the Lord was going to take my master today? Did you not try to stop me from following him? Now you're telling me to now send you all so you can go find him? Oh, okay. So whatever you see, you still see men as trees. That you don't have clarity of vision. That you have not had your eyes purged so that whatever is in your spirit Doubt, fear, unbelief, ignorance is still distorting your perception. Here's what they said, sir. They said, just say the word and 50 of our strongest men will search the wilderness for your master. Perhaps the spirit of the Lord has left him on some mountain or in some valleys. No, Elijah says, don't send them. But they kept urging him until they shamed him into agreeing. And he finally said, all right, send them. So 50 men searched for three days, but they did not find Elijah. Elisha has, was still at Jericho when they returned. Didn't I tell you not to go? He asked. All right, I'm, I'm going to end right there. I'm going to end right there. I, I have just read the word of the Lord. I, I wanted to be able to help us to understand the, the necessity that there's all these men. And I was so grateful when I went to Sheba because I was on my, on my way on my, I think I was on the plane. And you know what? I just thought about TB Joshua. I, I just, I thought about TB Joshua. And I thought about mantles in the earth realm. I thought about a lot of the great individuals who has transitioned to glory. TB Joshua laid down the ghost and he left. Young, but completed the assignment. And the Lord would let me know. He's like, there's mantles all around. There's mantles all around waiting for sons and daughters to pick them up. A lot of us, it's spiritual. It's not physical. That if you can look at mantles as energy, energy, according to the laws of physics, is never created or destroyed. So it is just passed on from one conduit to another. It's when you look at the glory of the Lord, it's waiting to rest on a vessel. And when this body no longer has the ability to sustain the spirit, it, it leaves. But, the, but the, the very power that rests upon the body is still necessary to operate within this realm. Heaven don't need mantles. Heaven don't need power. Heaven don't need glory. We need it. And so as long as there are souls here, with a void, as long as there's a church that still needs to be perfected, there's still the need for the gifts and the grace of God to be manifested through vessels, through you and I, through you and I, so that we can affect to stay in that role of producing and influencing and creating disciples until Jesus comes. That's what it's all about. It's really, it's really all about souls. It's, it's really it's really all about souls. It's really getting that, that impartation. And it, 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 it shifts, right? So it's that the glory is what it is. But, but my daughter's not going to preach like me. Like, I don't preach like my mom. But you'll be able to see a, a similarity. And if you knew my grandmother, you'd see a similarity through the lives. But I'm living in 2022. My daughter is here. She's 27. She already has a child at seven. So, so you see how the generations will need to take on the mantles and God is going to add and, and, and shift it and mold it for what's necessary in that time. And then when, when the vessel has transitioned, then the glory is still there waiting to be carried on to a next generation uh, to, to be customized, if you will, to fit the need of what's, what's necessary for that day. My God, it's really all about souls. 
All right, I'm gonna leave here. Oh, my dad's on here, y'all. Look at him. What do you? <laughs> I love you, Papa. It's time for you to go to bed now. <laughs> it's almost eleven. I love you all. I, I appreciate you all for joining us tonight. I hope the word has blessed you. I so thoroughly enjoyed. God bless you, my sister, Sister Pierman. God bless you, woman of God. It's been a um, powerful time for our Bible study tonight. I thank God for his faithfulness towards us. Uh, we will be at prayer 5 a.m., y'all. Get on the Zoom, not 4. We've been praying for like the last two months at 4 a.m. for an hour. We'll be praying starting today, 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Let everybody know. I love you too, Sister Celia. I got your message. Listen, like, there's a work coming for uh, Sister Celia. I need you to understand that we need teachers to, to have, I'm, 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 there's a program coming, okay? Teachers need some psychological training, clinical training to deal with, to deal with children and parents and da, 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 da. That's in the works. Okay. That's in the, that's in the works, like almost done. This, I'm working with a, okay. So I need you to stay open to that. All right. That's part of what you sent me the text. I need you to know that prior to going into COVID situation, I told Bishop Borders here in Boston, we're going to need more therapists and more psychologists because when, anytime you get ready to alter the life of people, Especially you put on a mask for a whole, your whole life changed, locking you down, taking away your freedom and your, your mind went through a shift, whether you know it or not. Whether people, a lot of people dying, a lot of children not seeing their parents, their grandparents transition. People had babies without partners or, or spouses there. We, we went through a really traumatic time. And I, I, while we're yet praying, I still want you all to understand that this had an effect on the psyche of the saints and people in general. And so the Lord has given us psychology and he's given us therapies and he's given us models and modules that we can use to help partner our word. This is my handy dandy old Bible. Our word with our knowledge to help us to make our spirit, soul and body alive and well. OK, so I want you all to continue. Now, listen. I need y'all to understand this. This is good. Amen. I love you, Sister Cheryl. I praise God for y'all. Let's pray out. If you all want to sow a seed, Sister Denise, I thank God for you. Um, please know that we are going to uh, we are going to India. We're going to India. We're going to uh, we're going to be leaving on the fifteenth. So pray for us. We leave the fifteenth to go to Israel for the Apostle BKW, and from Israel, we're going to be flying to Gunta. Um, we'll be there to dedicate the church in Gunta, as well as to meet with our pastors. You know, we have about 60 pastors with Pastor Sakar that we teach every month there. And so we'll be there. We got to go see the children. Got to go see the children that, that live at the slum. Um, and so I want y'all to even consider please sowing a special seed if y'all want to wait to sow it, um, a special seed so that we can um, go well. We can go there well and do well while we're there um, do well for them. Okay. Do well for them um, while we're there. So we're thanking you all for your support. Also, I mean, Amina has uh, um, gotten accepted into a uh, theater. Um, I'll, I'll call it theater school in, in Los Angeles. And so um, please consider sowing a, a gift to support CD um, to getting uh, her to this program in LA. Um, it's a great, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. I love you all. I thank God for you all. Amen. Oh, sis, you ain't saying nothing but a word right here. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Awesome. Okay. Yes, we will be praying for marriages because there's been a lot of domestic violence, a lot of divorces, a lot of people just can't stand each other because, you know, we used to go to work and see you. We had our time away. Now we were forced to live on the inside. And to get to see you all the time. So we had no breathing space. And so then the things that we would tolerate now, it infuriates. And then when that becomes, when we don't have um, a balance on the inside, the enemy finds a foothold. And then it, he makes it, he makes it uh, a whole lot. He makes a whole lot. So we have to pray. And this is, this is like, don't get super spiritual on me right here. This is like, okay, we need to forgive. We need, we need, we need, we need to pray. We need to we need to have therapy. We need to have counseling. We need to know how to love ourselves. We know how to let our spouse. We need to repent. We need to humble ourselves. We need to confess our faults. We need to allow our spouses to critique us without us having a clap back. 
We need to let them have their say because you're not perfect. I know you think you are, but you're not. And so sometimes you see yourself in the best light and they don't. And you need to let them be able to, to tell you what's wrong with you, what's irritate them about you without you having a say, well, you do this. No, no, no. Okay. Just listen. Put yourself in their shoes and hear it. Hear it. Just, just let it be their day today. How can I serve you today? How can I love you today? How about that? How can I love you today? Have I done everything? Have I done anything to hurt you? Have I done, what, what can I do better? What can I do to help you? Come on, I'm talking right now. Okay, this is what we have to do because it's, it's not magic. It's not magic. It's, it's not, oh, we're all in love. Okay, after all the feeling is done, it's the commitment that you do right because you made a vow that you see them for who they are. You sue them for who they are, that they are divinity in a body. Come on now. That they're divinity in a body. And their body and their soul have proclivities that may irritate you, that may not be kind. I'm not saying stay in an abusive situation. I'm saying that they're a person. And sometimes you're the source of their irritation. So you got to sometimes make yourself scarce, but you feel sad because it's like, you know, you're irritating your spouse. But you got to say, okay, we just need a break. And that means like maybe you need to go go to you know go away for a couple of days, and I'll go to my my girl. You know what I'm saying? Just make space, create create that void where your heart yearns for them. All right, there's a lot that we can do. Come on, <laughs> oh God, I'm just gonna help you. Okay, it's 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 work, y'all. It's work. Marriage is work. After you say yes to the dress. Some of y'all say, uh uh, to, to the rest of it. Okay. Don't do that. This is covenant. This is God's business. Marriage is God's business. And if you don't get into God's business, God is serious about his business. Um, as casual as many people will take it, it's the covenant God means to last for a lifetime. All right. And so we'll talk about submission and subjection and all that stuff. Be su submitted one to another. Submission is a two way street, it's not one. It's not one. Submit ye one to another in all things. That's the word of the Lord. Come on. <laughs> all right. I love you all. Father, we just thank you. We bless your mighty name tonight for just being present and blessing your people. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would continue to work on us and help us to be better versions of the self that we are right now. Continue to allow the blood to flow through us and to cover us and to transform us. Continue to let revelation and truth and light Allow us to see ourselves the way you see us, God. We want God kind of sight. We want to be elevated and lifted in the realm of the spirit so that, God, our perception will be correct, not based on what we see or what others say, but, God, what you have already spoken. It is the power of your word that transforms life, God, and so help us to stand firm on the word of God. I pray, God, today, yes, for those who have gone through so many different psychological changes through due to the pandemic and do God to uh, situations that's beyond their control. Father, I pray for marriages. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would send the spirit of reconciliation and healing in the name of Jesus. I pray that God, that you would come against every wicked spirit that was sent to divide and to conquer in the name of Jesus. And you say, God, and the two shall become one flesh and become against everything that will try to sever in the name name of Jesus. We speak oneness, uh, divine oneness and wholeness, God. Uh, we pull out every knife that's in the heart. Oh my God. Uh, every soul, God. I even see a source, like somebody be literally sawn in two, but in the name of Jesus, uh, I pull it out. Uh, and God, I speak healing, God, to that oneness. I speak, God, a creativity and a oneness that it comes from the throne of God. Uh, I speak healing in the name of Jesus, God, to that soul, that fragmented soul, God, the trust that has been broken. I pray that God, that they would understand God, that even in their broken state of God, you're able to heal. I pray that God, they will see you. They will allow your presence to come in God and to mend and to fix it and to heal and to restore what has been fragmented, what has been ravished God, that there's nothing beyond your ability to heal and fix. But God, we have to trust you in the broken places. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would make marriages stronger than it was before. I pray God for the children that's in the middle of these 
God, uh, horrendous arguments and these horrendous God um, showing of animosity and hatred. I pray to God that you will silence their mouth, that you would shut their mouths, uh, that in the name of God, that you would keep their feet still, God, that you would lock them in place and that they will have an encounter with you, Lord. I pray that you would break them down to their common denomination, that God, the spirit of pride will not have its way uh, that will cause them to just see themselves, but to see God, the bigger picture in the name of Jesus, Father. You in marriage is representing God, the relationship that Jesus Christ had with the church, uh, that you did not abandon your responsibility, God, that you did not play us like a fiddle, but oh God, you was faithful. Lord, when you could have walked away, Jesus, you said no, uh, but for this cause you came. You came to love us beyond ourselves. You came to love us, Father, and to give your life as a ransom for us. And my God, that's what you require of the husband to love his spouse um, as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. You said to the wives uh, to obey your husband, to love them. My God, yes, God, to submit to, to the leadership and the headship of that husband. Father, I thank God for divine unity and oneness in the body, Father, that each one will know their roles, God, but there will be mutual respect and love and admiration, true admiration for one another, God, and they will walk in that unity. And God, you said one will chase a thousand, and two will put 10,000 to flight. So in the name of Jesus, God, I speak, God, over every marriage, God, every God, every, every marriage, God, that's represented, every family here, God, I pray to God, there'll be restoration, that there'll be healing, that there'll be, God, a uh, uh, Oh God, that you will come against the division in the name of you, God, and unity and peace will reign, Father. There will be true hearts connected, God, that there will be no, no third party, God, lingering in the mind in the name of, I come against, God, those who will try to insert themselves into marriages. Uh, the Lord God rejects you. The Lord God rebukes you. We bind you and we sit you down in the corner, my God, until you receive deliverance in the name of Jesus. Uh, we come against, oh God, the infiltration, God, and the third party voice voices that will want to speak into marriages that will cause a division. God, you hate divorce. That's what your word says. So in the name of Jesus, God, we speak life and liberty and love and restoration and oneness in the body, in the marriages. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, that you're building up families and you're letting your glory, God, be seen and known. I give you praise, God, tonight for every seeker, every guest, every pastor, every visitor, God, that came through tonight. God, you know Know what they need, God. I thank you, Lord, that you are not far from them, but you're near even right now. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I thank God for peace now. I think of a peace and healing, Father, even within the body, the whole body. My God, within the heart area, within the cavity of the chest, in the name of Jesus, God, for God, and the burning in the chest, Father. For the acid reflux that has eroded God, the esophagus, and is causing God got problems sleeping at night. In the name of God, I pray God you would God, let a creative miracle happen, God, on the inside of that body. But I thank you, God, that you're going to give God meal control, Father. You're going to give them control over their tongue and not just what they desire to eat, Father, but what you need them to eat so that they will be received that healing, God, from the food they put into this body. I thank you, God, that you're working with us and you're helping us, God, to be better stewards of what you've given us in the name of Jesus, we bless you, God, tonight. And we pray to God as we rest, God, that your spirit will watch over us. The angel Lord will be encamped all around us. Uh, that God, you will bring us back at the appointed time, whether we're going to church, to work, our family, wherever we will be. We thank God for God, a speedy God, healing and recovery. Those God who are, are coming out of the hospital and those who are at home. I thank God for those who are just delivering children and, and babies, Father. I come against that spirit of God of postpartum depression in the name of Jesus. Um, I pray to God that there will be a regulation even right now out to the hormonal and the father and the mother in the name of Jesus. God, that child, Father, will not be neglected, but that child will be loved, God, and cared for. Oh, my God. I come in the spirit of sins. The Lord God rebuke you. I speak life and protection over those children in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, um, Holy Ghost, be present now. Holy Ghost, be present now. Oh, your protective measures be put in place uh, to protect these children even while they sleep in the name of Jesus. We decree life and life more abundantly even now in the name of Jesus. God, we give you praise um, and we give you glory. We thank God for hearing and answering our prayer. To God be the glory. Great things is done. We say thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Love you all. Love you all so much. Good to see you, Sister Janice Murphy. Have a great night. Listen, prayer, five o'clock, not four, five o'clock. I'm going to keep saying it. Prayer, five o'clock, starting tomorrow morning on our Zoom. Come get in here, get this prayer, get your day started right. Let's see what the Lord's going to do. He's always doing something miraculous. We're thanking God for it. I love you all. Have a peaceful night. 
and we will see you all soon. Take care. God bless you. Bye-bye.